I thought it'd be fun to cover the course of a very important, but not so well-known Roman road. Everyone's heard of the Via Appia, so that wouldn't be very much fun. But what about the Via Valeria? It was pretty important in its day, and actually there's a modern road that sits across most of it when it cuts across Italy. 2,000 years ago, Hannibal used it to march on Rome. Emperor Claudius used it to get back and forth to his mega project on the Fucine Lake. And Hadrian even used it to get back and forth to his famous villa at Tivoli. The road was built over several hundred years in sections. The first section is called the Via Tibertini, because, or actually Via Tibertina, as it runs from Rome to the town of Tiber, which is modern Tivoli. The section is, uh, is very ancient, and it was built probably starting in about 300 BC by Marcus Valerius Maximus. The second section is referred to generally as the Via Valeria, and it runs from Tivoli to Curfenia, and it was built by Marcus Valerius Massala. The next section from Carfinia to modern Pescara was built around 48 AD by the Emperor Claudius, and he had to get his name in it. So, so that section is generally called the Via Claudia Valeria. Now, in general, all three sections, though, by archaeologists are referred to as the Via Valeria. Um, the entire road is interesting, but in this video, I can't cover it all. So I'm really just going to focus on what you can see on that first section between Rome and Tivoli, because that's what a lot of people who come to visit Rome have a chance to see, and a lot of people will be going out to Tivoli to see Hadrian's Villa. The road is generally agreed to start at the Porta Tibertina. Uh, archaeologists love to disagree, but, but now that seems pretty well established. There are lots of tombs in this area on the outside of the wall, which is typical of a Roman road. The Porta Tibertina is a gateway through the Aurelian Wall, built in about 5 BC by Emperor Augustus, and it supports three aqueducts, the Aqua Marcia, the Tapula, and the Aqua Julia. I have a video on the Aqua Marcia, and I'll put a card in the upper right if you want to see how it comes from its source into the city of Rome. The ancient road then disappears under the modern construction, uh, but remnants of the pavement were found outside of the Church of San uh, Lorenzo outside the wall. That's the name of the church. And so it's pretty clear that it follows the road from then on. The ancient road then uh, follows along, as I said, with the modern road or under the modern road until it reaches the, uh, the Agno River, at which point the modern road veers to the north uh, and goes over a modern bridge. And the ancient road goes over an older bridge called the Ponta Mamalo, Mamolo. Uh, don't waste your time going there if you're even if you even if you have a car. The current bridge is a little downstream of the original. It's much narrower, very poorly maintained, and the road basically disappears into a garbage heap. So it's uh, it's not really a great tourist destination. The ancient road then runs back north and hits the modern road, and we know that because remnants of a Republican era bridge were found over the Faso del. Pratolongo <laughs> during some road work to widen the road. And, uh, and they, they eventually covered those uh, remnants up, but it confirms just that the two roads are running concurrent in that area. Then the ancient roadbed pops up on the north side of the modern road at Setacamini. Setacamini? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't speak Italian or, or Latin, so my pronunciations are going to be terrible. But um, this is a dedicated archaeological site, so it's definitely worth stopping at if you have a car. The ancient roadbed then pops out a number of times over the next couple of miles. And if you happen to know of a good stop along this stretch, please put a comment down below. I'd appreciate it. There are numerous ancient and modern stone quarries along the road. The most obvious ancient ones are on the south side of the river. But here, the, run, the road runs through one that's been operating for, uh, for 2,500 years. It's a travertine quarry. It's heavily industrialized. There's nothing interesting to see. But it's impressive just to think about how long this quarry's been operated. And many of the really impressive monuments in Rome are probably faced with travertine from this particular quarry. It's a, a pretty ugly sight to look at. The new road then breaks off of the ancient road, and the ancient road runs over the Ponta Luca, the Ponta Lucan. Um, there's a walking and biking access point on the north and the south side of the river. 
This bridge is pretty much one of the better examples of uh, original Roman construction. It's got a, a tufa core covered with travertine, probably from the local quarry we just saw. It's definitely more standard Roman. It's uh, 25 feet wide. It has all of the original arches, even though some of them are not visible and have been silted up a little bit. But it's definitely worth a stop if you're there. Uh, uh, an inscription nearby says that the bridge was built by Marcus Plautius Lucanus. So that's the, the, the Ponto Lucan, Lucan uh, gets its name from him. And also, uh, interesting enough, by Tiberius Claudius Nero. So this isn't the Emperor Nero, but it's probably the uh, father of the Emperor Tiberius. So that's pretty cool. Just past the bridge is the tomb of the Plautii. Uh, from the first century BC. This tomb is very similar to and contemporary with the tomb of Cecilia Metella along the Via Appia. The bridge and the tomb are, are getting major restorations, but they're definitely worth a stop to see. From there, there's an ancient Rome that runs down to Hadrian's villa, the Villa Adriana. It, it's an obvious stop if you're going to Tivoli. Uh, there's a lot of videos on it, so I won't cover that here. The Via Tibertina then runs past the tomb of the Serena. You can see them. They're on private property, so you need to get permission from the homeowner. Uh, I suggest skipping it unless you like challenges and, and you speak fluent Italian. The ancient Rome then goes up the hill past the temple of the Tosai. This is a building that's uh, in relatively good condition owing to the fact that it was taken over in the 10th century by the Catholic Church. Its original function isn't known, but its design is, is basically like a little pantheon, which is kind of cool, uh, with a 12-meter dome that has an oculus. It's, uh, it's very impressive. On the, it's on private property, and it's being renovated, so there, there aren't a lot of pictures, and you can't go in it. But uh, from this uh, engraving, it shows that the construction is opus mixtum, which is a mix of concrete uh, covered with rock and brick. I have a video on the different types of Roman wall construction, so if you're interested, I'll put a card in the upper right so you can go look at that. It's similar and contemporary to the Temple of Minerva Medica in Rome by the Porta Maggiore, which is 25 me meters in diameter instead of 12 meters. So maybe see that instead. It's much bigger, it's open to the public, even though the roof is collapsed. The road then passes through a tunnel under a huge platform for the Temple of Hercules. This is definitely worth a visit. Uh, and then up the hill is the Temple of Vesta, also called the Temple of the Sibyl, which is made of irregular stone-faced concrete called Opus Incertum. I also cover it in that uh, video. And it has an amazing view of the valley. The Romans definitely knew where to put their temples. Uh, there's also a popular restaurant at the temple. I haven't tried it yet, but I hear it's okay. I, I plan to try it when I go visit in the fall. Finally, in Tivoli, there is the Villa d'Este. Um, it gets really outstanding reviews. It has an amazing garden that you should really see. Personally, I won't have time because I'll be spending all of my time in Tivoli looking for Romans. So that's the Via Valeria from Rome to Tivoli, also known as the Via Tibertina. If you follow along this far, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if there's stuff I got wrong, stuff I got right, stuff you'd like to see next time. Uh, I had lots of fun putting it together. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, just let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, you know the drill. And if you're looking at the screen right now, you'll see another video of mine that YouTube thinks that you would like. So give that a click and see you later.